scares the hell out of me. This is all new tonight. How would you react if more than a thousand criminals moved into your neighborhood? Would you want to know about it before it happened? Well, tonight, a Denver 7 investigation has the state's Department of Corrections scrambling to explain how it happened. Chief investigative reporter Tony Kovaleski is here tonight. And, Tony, your questions have prompted change. Change because our sources sent us an internal memo showing the state trying to hide the truth, complicit in a scheme to mislead building tenants and neighboring residents in Aurora. It's not a population that I would want any of my children or anybody else's children running into. Take a look. This is some of what our hidden cameras discovered outside this Aurora office building. Fair to say these are bad guys? Fair to say there's a lot of bad guys. He's a veteran employee of the state's Department of Corrections. But we do have an obligation to be honest and transparent with the public, too. He's asked us to alter his voice and disguise his identity because he wants to keep his job. Well, when we received the email, it was troubling. He's talking about this internal email obtained by Denver 7 Investigates, sent to state parole officers and written by a parole manager. It states, I have been informed the other tenants in the building do not know exactly what we do or the nature of our business. An email asking state employees to conceal the truth. As our cameras showed, hundreds of parolees. Sex offenders, gang members. Now report to this building. Violent offenders that potentially pose a risk to the people that they're around. The memo from a parole manager includes this line. Those tenants who have asked were told by property managers that we are a state advocacy group. Is that office a state advocacy group or a parole office? It is a parole office. So that memo is not transparent? No, I don't think so at all. Number 7 has confirmed more than 1,000 parolees started reporting to this office in Aurora the first week of July. Sources tell us and documents confirm on the days our hidden cameras were in the parking lot, nearly five dozen sex offenders reported each day. Based on what's in the email, the information that was given out, it certainly comes across as disingenuous. A lie? Dishonest at worst. It's been very uncomfortable for a lot of people in our office. Her office tutors young children and sits just above the state's new parole office. That's the that state of state, Colorado. Right. Would jeopardize people, students, and families just for their purposes. That's sad. We had kids in the building. I think they should have let us know who's going to be around. We also shared the memo. I have been informed the other tenants in the building. With tenants inside the building. Do not know exactly what we do. What's your reaction to what you read? I feel lied to, certainly. I don't feel like they were honest. I think the state has a duty to be honest with us. And our investigation has learned the state also failed to disclose the parole office was opening across the street from this playground. <laughs> Apartment managers received no notification, a playground where unsupervised children play nearly every day. A mismatch? Cheers the hell out of me. When parole officers get the badge, do they take a pledge to be honest? Yes. Melissa Roberts serves as director of the state's adult parole division. She manages the manager who wrote that memo. They must tell the truth. Yes. All the time. I, that's my expectation, yes. Fudging the truth? Acceptable? No, sir. The memo also includes, I anticipate the truth will be revealed at some point, but I would like to stress we remain as low-key as possible. Possibly an explanation for this fact. The signs out front only say state of Colorado and not parole office. Can you see how it looks Absolutely. A deceptive? Absolutely. Parole officers were outraged that there was this game to fool the other tenants. Well, I think it's interesting that our conversations always get to a point where my staff are outraged and call you and they don't call me. That's a problem. I think your office took a credibility hit with that memo. Is that fair? I, I would understand the perception of that for sure, yes. Robert says she was unaware of the memo written by her top manager, but now she has launched an internal inquiry 
into what happened and why. In hindsight, should that memo have had a different tone and different information? I think that really in hindsight, what we should have done is been a little bit more... Um, Honest? Forthright. I think we need to use this as a lesson. In response to our investigation, Director Roberts emailed a comprehensive plan to Denver 7 that includes meetings with the property owners and managers, the community around the new parole office, and meetings with her staff. She tells us she's committed to fixing this problem. Now, there are also tough questions for the city of Aurora and why it failed to notify the community. Those answers in the days ahead. With Denver 7 Investigates, I'm Tony Kovaleski.